Welcome back to Elizabeth Plants. I'm Elizabeth and today is all about alocasia. So as you guys probably know, I'm a pretty big alocasia fan. I mean, you can see a couple framing the camera today, uh, but I love my alocasia. I love my elephant ear. They are one of my first favorite and still to this day, my one of my favorite types of plants. However, they get a lot of grief and a lot of you guys requested to learn more about how on earth I keep them alive, uh, how I keep more than two leaves per plant for some of them, and just general care. Um, so today we're going to walk through some of the most common care pieces. And I want to preface this by saying this is my experience with alocasia in my environment with my water, air, etc. I am located in Michigan, so we have, you know, four seasons. And I have to have the heat on in the winter and the AC on in the summer. Uh, so this care is pretty specific to that, but you can always adjust it to your needs. So the following categories up on the screen are what we'll be going over. We're going to talk about soil, water, temperature, fertilizing, pests, the two leafy thing everybody asks about, cleaning them, and then also propagation. So first let's talk about soil. Honestly, I used very similar soil mixes with my alocasia that I do with most of my aeroids. Uh, I just add a little bit less chunk, uh, so a little bit less bark, not really large chunks of anything. It's pretty much just soil that I can get my hands on with some perlite or pumice. If I have small bark chunks, I may add some of those, otherwise not really any bark charcoal, again, not super huge chunks. And then I mix it up until it's not super chunky, but also there's some, some flow of water. And this, I, it, it kind of just gets adjusted to what I have available to me. In my experience, most alocasias are not that sensitive to like minor changes in their soil. In fact, this alocasia right here, it is still sitting in the soil it came in, which doesn't look very well draining at all. In fact, it looks like there's a lot of peat moss in there. And it's been fine in that soil since I got it a couple months ago. Same with this guy right here in the soil it came in. However, this guy right here, this guy right here, and this guy right here, they're all in the aeroid mix minus the bark. Actually, my sumo right here has bark in it. I can actively see bark and it doesn't seem to care. So that's kind of the soil that I use. Something to keep in mind is when comparing them to aeroids, because that's kind of where I'm comparing right now, these plants require a little bit more soil moisture which is why I make it a little bit less chunky. Whereas in my philodendron, like really well draining, pretty, I mean, pretty well draining. Alocasia have a tendency to like moisture in their soil a little bit more than like a philodendron would. So that is why I take out some of the chunk and then I don't have to adjust my watering uh, compared to the rest of my collection, which is primarily aeroids. So next let's talk about watering. Um, so I have some pretty rare and some pretty common alocasia, and I water them the same. Uh, I have not found any alocasia that I have had be more sensitive to like filtered water versus not filtered water. Just make sure when you're watering it is room temperature, and it's not like, depends on where you live, but my water is pretty pH balanced, so they don't really seem to care. However, it is pretty high in minerals. They don't seem to care. Now, how often I water. I water these plants when the soil is mostly dry. I'm pretty bad, so sometimes they dry out and I lose a leaf to crisp um, or something like that. Oh, let's see, do I have an example? So my Buddhist palm is in um, quarantine because of spider mites. We'll talk about pests in a sec. But you can see possibly here, these little dry and crispy bits. That's because I missed a watering and it dried out, they crisped up, I lost a leaf. 
the world moved on, the plant was fine. Like I said before, these plants, they like to be a little bit more moist than a philodendron. So there are a couple ways you can go about it. If your collection is primarily aeroid, you could water your alocasia slightly more frequently or make the soil slightly less draining. I choose to make the soil slightly less draining and water it the same as I do my philodendrons. But always check, <laughs> always check the soil because you do not want to overwater or significantly underwater an alocasia. They're sensitive to root rot just like all other plants are, except they also have a bulb underneath the soil. They are bulb plants. So if you rot the roots, you can trim them off, but if you rot the bulb, you're out of luck. Um, so we'll talk about the bulb when we talk about propagation. Water when almost dry, which depends on your season, depends on your humidity, depends on your soil, etc. So next let's talk about temperature. This one's really quick. Uh, my alocasias, and in my experience, they do just fine in normal household temperatures. My house ranges between 65 and 78, depending on the time of year, whether or not we remember to turn the heat slash AC on, when the sun is beating in our windows, and the temperature doesn't seem to affect my alocasia. I don't have an outdoor space to test outdoor temperatures in. However, I see more common large, large, large alocasia and colocasia outside in Michigan during 40 to 60 degree temperatures and they look just fine, that is up to you whether or not you want to test that. Next, let's talk about fertilizing. Again, alocasia aren't as hard as people think. So fertilizing these guys, I fertilize when I notice growth, uh, which is usually in the growing season, and I fertilize approximately every other watering. I can skip a fertilizing just fine. So what do I use for fertilizer? I am not an expert on fertilizer. However, what I use is whatever fertilizer I am already using on my other plants, diluted, just like I do with all of my other plants. You do not want to over fertilize an alocasia similar to any other plant. Less is more. Do a little bit more frequently if you're unsure. Pay close attention to the plant and it'll tell you if it's over fertilized. Again, so much of this is pretty different space to space. Next, let's talk about pests. Pests, 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 pests. Alocasia are the breeding ground center for spider mites. I have never had another type of pest on my alocasia, knock on wood, uh, fingers crossed, whatever. I've only ever had spider mites, but I almost always have a constant flow of spider mite growth on my houseplants. I'll insert a clip right now of a close-up of some spider mite infestations that I currently have that I am currently battling. So one of the biggest reasons why alocasia are so sensitive to spider mites is all of the grooves and crevices in a lot of plants. This guy right here, he's clean right now, again, knock on wood, but he is one of my biggest culprits for spider mites because of all of these bends and flows. And I mean, if you just look at, it's all kind of wrinkly and the, there's perfect space for the spider mite to grow. If you look in these plants, they have a tendency to create their webs here this guy had a spider mite infestation recently and I think he's clean, but this is the little cup. They love it in there. So it is super, 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 super important that you keep your alocasia clean. Every single time I water my alocasia, I clean the leaves. The easiest way to do that is spray them down with some neem solution and stick them in the tub once the neem dries or mostly dries, I spray it down. And if I'm not doing a fertilizing, I just water it straight in the tub. If I am doing a fertilizing, I will either bottom soak them in a fertilizer mix in the tub at the same time, or I will just throw a diluted fertilizer mix on top of the soil after I've cleaned them. That way I'm not rinsing it 
through all the way, if that makes sense. But yeah, clean, 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 clean. I'm going to skip past the two leafy thing for a second and talk about how I clean my alocasia. So the best way I have found, especially given the spider mite problem I have with them, is to take a like foundation style makeup brush, not too soft, not too hard, uh, something with a lot of bristle, and I create a solution that is mostly water. If I have rubbing alcohol, I add some rubbing alcohol, just like a splash. If we're saying filling like a, a six inch pot with water, I'm gonna do a splash of rubbing alcohol, a drop or two, of, Roger wanted to say hi, um, but a couple drops of, of a dish soap. I recommend the one linked down below. I do a little bit more research on your soap. That's the only soap I've ever used. I know it to be safe for plants. So mostly water, a splash of rubbing alcohol, a couple drops max of soap. <laughs> you just jumped on the and I mix it up and then I wipe down all of the details in the leaves and then also all the way down the stem of my alocasia if I'm doing a deep clean, if I see signs for pests. If you are interested in me doing a more detailed video on how to spot spider mites, because I'm a pro at spotting them these days, uh, let me know and I'll do that. So comment that down below. So next let's talk about the two leaf thing. What I hear most common for people, their issue with alocasia is that they can't get it to grow more than two leaves at a time. Each time a new leaf comes up, an old leaf seems to die off. And I mean, almost all of the plants, the alocasia that you see here have three or more leaves with the exception of this guy. And that is only because I decided it was easier to cut off the oldest leaf than to treat it for pests because it had a spider mite outbreak but only on the oldest leaf so i just cut it off it was perfectly healthy i had three so how do i keep my alocasia from dying off honestly my best guess for you other than follow all the other things i have detailed in this video is humidity so this kind of pairs with let's talk about humidity he keeps bumping the camera Humidity is so, so, so important for alocasia. With my philodendron um, and my other aeroids uh, that I have, I find that they are happy at like 40 to 45 to 55% humidity. And my alocasia will be okay at those percentages. However, they thrive more. They thrive more when the humidity is upwards of 55 to 65 plus. I just find that I don't lose as many leaves. I don't have to water them as frequently. They're just a little bit happier. The moisture also fights the spider mites a little bit more. It's just kind of a better deal if you can get your humidity up. One way that I find is most effective other than humidifiers, and I'll uh, link to my video on humidity somewhere, um, but I group my alocasia together. When I group them together, they kind of feed off of each other for the moisture. However, be careful because they also feed off of each other for spider mites and other pests. Another way that I keep my plants from doing two leaf only is with watering them enough. I think we're all a little bit afraid to overwater our plants and when you're used to something like an aeroid, pothos, things like that, you don't want the soil to remain moist for very long, if at all. However, with alocasia, you want the soil to remain moist a little bit. You don't want the soil to completely dry out. And I think that's where a lot of people get it wrong. And the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is propagation. It, I am not aware of any other way to propagate an alocasia other than separation. So I brought this guy into the video to show you because he's got a ton of little pups down here. And the only way I know to propagate an alocasia easily is to just wait until there are pups. You just wait until there are pups. Your plant needs to be a little happier for that to occur. 
And then when there are pups, if you want to propagate it, you take the plant out of the soil and you should be able to separate the pups either with cutting or just breaking. Um, but you should be able to separate the bulbs. Similar to ZZ, if you're familiar with the ZZ, they've got that bulb down at the bottom and propagating, you can separate the different bulbs, breaking them, cutting them, whatever it is that you need to do. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure because most of my plants I can take cuttings, but not alocasia. You have to let them do their thing, at least to easily propagate. I am sure there are other ways you can put down in the comments below all of the scientific and crazy detailed ways of propagating. I just recommend waiting until there are pups. It's the best, easiest, and most satisfying way. When you have pups, you know your plant is happy. It just works out that much easier. So that is my alocasia care regimen. That is how I care for my alocasias in my environment with my tools, water, etc. I believe that you can adjust all of these tips and details to your environment. You have to be patient. It is doable. You can do it. You can have three plus leaves on your alocasia. I believe in you. I know it's possible. It took me years to perfect this and I have killed accidentally so many alocasia in the process. Do not get discouraged. They are beautiful plants and I just wish uh, people knew how to care for them a little bit better so that everybody could enjoy them like I do. Let me know in the comments down below how you care for your alocasia, what your experience with alocasia is. If you have any additional tips in addition to what I've said, like this video if you like care videos. If you want to see more, make suggestions in the comments down below. Subscribe to see more houseplant content, and I will see you next time. Raja, your pain. Raja. No. Raja, you want to come be in the video?